Hey, how you doing? Not, my name's not, um, what was his name? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's video is about Honda's latest and greatest lawnmower. This is their HRN216 line back in 2020. They completely revamped their line for their 35th anniversary. It's a brand new lawnmower. You probably saw this in an earlier video I did with having to change the drive belt. Well, it took forever to get parts in, so I thought I'd take some time and show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of Honda's latest lawnmower. So Honda, for this HRN series, did a complete makeover for the engine. It went from 106 parts, internal, external parts, to 39 parts. That's pretty amazing when you consider the engineering that goes into this thing. The prior series, HRX, had a plastic deck, and this is made out of steel. And even though it's going to be probably very durable, it's also going to be prone to rust. Now, I think a really overlooked feature is this longer oil filler tube. On the older mowers, it was very, very short. And especially on those AYP decks, you would wind up with oil spilling all over the side. So this is a lot cleaner and easier to work with. Now, they've been doing these larger filler caps for a while, which is great. It helps certainly cut down on the spilling of the gas when you fill up. So that's actually a good thing that they have continued to put on their newer machines. The engine shroud no longer comes off with 10 millimeter hexes. They actually have a single JIS screw with a clip on here. That clip, I can imagine, will get lost pretty easily. What holds this shroud on are four little tabs, two on this side. We literally push in with your finger and it pops up that way on the other side to remove the cap out of the way. Again, two more tabs there under here. You push in and the other tab, it's kind of hard to get off this one is, behind that captive nut. Oops, and there, I lost that little nut. You don't want to lose that, and that can pop out there. It is a bit fiddly, but the entire thing comes off, and what you have left are no longer studs, but bolts that hold on the recoil starter. This shroud is held in place, this little tab in the front, lines up with these guys, and these four tabs go back in these slots. You just have to remember to replace the nut on there, and that's what keeps that from flying off. And this entire fan deflector now is made out of plastic. And I think Honda has a good history of making some good plastics. Should hold up pretty well. This nut has a curved side that goes on the back, slides right on there. And this nut just puts friction on that tab so it can't pop out. Now, unfortunately, Honda has cheaped out on their cables. Uh, their older versions had uh, little rubber boots on there, which was great, even on their residential type mowers. They've been doing it on their commercial mowers for years and years. But unfortunately, water can seep in there when it rains or if you don't have an ideal storage situation, which a lot of homeowners uh, aren't able to keep their mower out of the weather. So that's unfortunate. These cables are going to go bad more often. Now, Honda has finally gotten this right, in my opinion. This is the air box. And if you notice, the clouds parted and the angels sang, look at that. Those are nuts, not bolts. So they've been using this on the commercial mowers for a long time. This will make taking this apart to change out anything so much easier because you won't have to be fiddling with a bunch of 
gaskets and whatnot. I don't know how many gaskets are behind here right now. I'll have to look at a parts diagram. But even if there's three gaskets back here, having studs are far easier to work with than the older versions that had shoulder bolts. And even before that, there were types that had little bushing sleeves that had to go in there, which those were easy to lose. So this, I think, has a less chance of getting warped the way they have this set up. Their wheel leveling mechanism uh, is a, a huge improvement, uh, much sturdier parts, and you only have to do one wheel, uh, which will then level both wheels. That is certainly an improvement on the earlier ones that had um, levelers on both sides on the HRX series. The same goes for the rear wheels as well, much more substantial, easier, and less prone to corrosion. Unfortunately, Honda has cut some corners, I believe, not in a good way. Even on their HRX series, they actually had ball bearings, but these do not. I believe there is some sort of bushing in there. I don't, I don't think it's metal, or it might be metal, I don't know. It looks like it's sort of pressed in over there on that side, but anyway... They've chosen to cheap out here. On the drive wheels, Honda talks about a two-way ratcheting mechanism. I'm not going to take that apart to show how that works, but this is an improvement. It should be an improvement over earlier versions that tended to get jammed up pretty well. The other thing, too, is there is a bushing in here, not bearings. Unfortunately, another cheap out thing that they did on their rear wheels as well. Still has metal gear, which is better than many of the people that have the nylon gears around here. So they cheaped out for even the older Hondas had bearings. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I think it's ugly. The underside of this deck, as you can see, will eventually start rusting. I believe Honda has made changing out the entire transmission a lot easier with removing a bracket here and this nylon bushing. Same thing on the top side. The transmission itself actually still has serviceable parts. Thank you, Honda. Now there's a vast improvement on what they've done with the handles very easy just a quarter turn on each side which makes it very easy to fold up the handlebars and the entire mower folds over and doesn't take up a lot of space now you do want to operate the bail handle in order to flip the handlebars all the way over so that you can reattach the handles and a simple quarter turn back lifts up to watch that pin go in both sides and lift up on the handle make sure that pin goes all the way in now as far as carburetor parts are concerned i'm not sure about some of the other gaskets but i will tell you that the bowl gasket that's in this new machine it has a totally different part number but i found there was no difference at all so i use the old part number 16010883015 it fit perfectly because I damaged this gasket when I was getting this machine to run earlier. So that's kind of weird. The drive belt for this machine is 22431VR8N03. I believe that's the same across their entire line of this. Uh, and I was unable to find a crossover on that, but there might be one out there. So there's all the good, bad and ugly with Honda's new HRN series mowers. If you like the video, please push the like and subscribe button and I can make more of these videos. If you want to know how to change the belt on this mower, watch this video or right here. Remember, I'm the lawnmower lady and as I like to say, mow happy. Thanks for watching.